my liver cancer treatment, also a bit of a journey, that January when I had been diagnosed on the 4th, I followed up. I saw the oncologist the following week. We did more blood work again. He was giving me fluids and he came into the infusion room where my mom and I were sitting and told us we had to immediately go to the university level ER, that he was very concerned with um, my liver function and that essentially is basically he was concerned it was going to fail and and that was going to be it. Um, I appreciate that I understood his concern, but he didn't do it in a way that made me freak out. So I really did appreciate that. So now we had to go to the university level where ironically my outpatient second opinion was like in two weeks. So in the end, that doctor ended up seeing me while I was there and was in charge of my treatment there. While I was there, they felt like they really had to get something going. So I had 46 hours of full Fox and it was pretty awful. The, the stay, the stay was really terrible. Like I'm a 45 year old woman who has just been diagnosed with something that is essentially terminal. This it's incurable. It's incurable. Whereas my doctor, of course, was hoping that I do so well that I would get to a point that maybe transplant was an option. I never thought it was like for me, I knew it was very serious and I made sure that people understood that. I really wanted people to get like a branch of my journey that I'm going to have some treatment and boop, I'll be all better. That's not the case. Like this is completely life changing. So while I was at the hospital, I had my chemo. The nurses were not so swift. So I had arms full of bruises and I ended up with, you know, two arms full of IVs to get this chemo and the care was terrible and nobody, t I asked for a palliative care consult and it was canceled, which I think is wrong. Um, like nobody really took time to talk to us about any of this. And then I will say when I told them I was going back to my hospital where I work and where my doctor is, I think kind of at that point they were like, okay, we're going to finish this treatment. We're going to get this woman out of our doors. She's not even going to be bringing her money to us with my expensive drugs. So <sighs> I survived that full fox, but honest to God, that was the worst. That was the worst. I, one treatment, I, I lost all my hair within like six months. Um, I had every horrible side effect you could imagine. Uh, like I ended up having chemical burns because, okay, I've got two IVs full of arms. Like I, if like urine hits my skin, well, this is urine that now has chemo in it. And no one is making it clear, like, oh my gosh, make sure you are dry as can be. Like, and even that required an emergency messaging. I sent a messenger message to my gynecologist over the week and I was like, oh my God, I need help. I don't know what's going on here. Um, however, that, that was only a one time disaster. What I had, my treatment has been easy. My I started on January 20th with my um, immunotherapy. I didn't have to get a port. I have just my um, Tocentric and my Avastin. And my, my biggest complaint really is fatigue, but I already had a predisposition to fatigue. So really these last 15 months, it's not been bad at all. It, it it really, it really hasn't. I'm switching care for the last time. I think I finally found the right place. And I was talking, we were talking with the doctor last week and, you know, they tell me they, no one can really give me a prognosis because I'm doing so well. You know, I'm 15 months post diagnosis. 
my AFP is down to 60, 60 from like 4,400. What I didn't understand that that January stay when I had to get the full Fox, that in conversation months later that that university doctor said, oh, well, yeah, you know, if that hadn't worked, you got a couple weeks to live. I was like, what? I I knew my doctor was worried, but uh, that was nowhere, nowhere on my mind that if this doesn't work, I'm going to die. So again, I thank my, I thank my doc, my original doctor for not putting it like that. And I went back to him and I said, oh my God, this is what this guy said. He goes, well, first of all, Kara, I would never have said it to you like that. <laughs> but second of all, yes, I was very concerned.